Hi, good evening. Hello everybody, welcome. Uh, we're going to get going here, so I'm going to call to order this meeting of the Board of Education. If we could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. It's America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you. Can I get a motion to approve the meeting agenda? And Dr. Francis, all those in favor of approving the meeting agenda? All right, that passes 5-0. Thank you. So the first order of business is our recognitions, which I'm guessing is why most of you are here tonight. So Mr. Mayo and I are going to step over that way. So this is one of my favorite parts of uh, what we do. We actually get to recognize our student and staff for some of their achievements. So what we will do is uh, work through each group. We ask that you would remain here until the end of the recognitions tonight. At that point, we'll take a brief pause and everybody can stick around and watch the rest of the Board of Education meeting. No? Okay, that wasn't in your plan. All right, so first up would be the uh, Greenwich Public Schools Paraeducator uh, of the Year finalist and the winner. So Mary Ford, where are you? There you are. Hi. Um, in March 2013, the Connecticut State Education Department of Education, State of Connecticut Department of Education, and the School Paraprofessional Advisory Council renamed the Connecticut Paraeducator of the Year Award to be called the Anne Marie Murphy Paraeducator of the Year Award, in honor of Anne Marie Murphy, a special education paraprofessional who was killed in Newtown. Anne Marie worked one on one with Dylan Hockley who had special education needs and protected him with her body as they both died on that horrible day. Superintendents and school administrators in Greenwich are invited to nominate one paraeducator who has demonstrated exceptional skill and dedication in the performance of their job. Identification of the 2020 paraeducator of the year will be made at a ceremony held in Hartford in the fall. Uh, the 2020 Paraeducator of the Year will serve for the 2020 calendar year. Um, and individually, we recognize each of the paraeducators that we've nominated um, to be considered for the Greenwich Paraeducator of the Year. Um, the the Anne-Marie Murphy Paraeducator of the Year program recognizes outstanding paraeducator contributions to schools and communities, and it honors paraeducators who have demonstrated exceptional skill in their performance of their jobs. This year we have two paraprofessional paraeducator nominees. Um, unfortunately, we're only allowed to send one name to the state, even though we call every year and ask for an exception. Um, they say no, and they've told me to please stop calling. Um, but we always have exceptional people that we want to send forward. So we're here tonight to honor our two people. I will introduce them both, and then I will tell you which one of the two has been selected to represent Greenwich at the state um, award ceremony. So first, I'm going to ask Suzanne Coyne, the assistant principal from Western Middle School, to introduce our first candidate for the Anne Marie Murphy Paraeducator Award, Ms. Julie Pisani. Please, please hold your applause until the end, um, and then we'll give you an opportunity to recognize both of our outstanding paraeducators. Good evening, Ms. Julie Pisani. Ms. Pisani has worked at Weston for the last 18 years. That alone means you deserve this award. And anyone watching her would think it's her first year because of her enthusiasm and patience she shows for her students each day. And these are with some of our most challenging students in the school. Those that helped nominate her can describe her best. Ms. Pisani is flexible in her, in tune with her students' daily moods, successes, and challenges. She knows when to step in and assist, academically, behaviorally, or emotionally. She's able to de-escalate potential situations with her ability to read student cues, remain neutral, positive, yet firm. Ms. Pisani refuses to accept a student's worst effort, and she celebrates their success, big or small, with genuine enthusiasm. 
By creating relationships built upon high expectations, respect, and encouragement, Ms. Bazzani is able to greatly impact not only her students, but the classrooms lucky enough to have her. Julie, thank you for all you've done to support the students and staff at Western. How about another 18 years? No? Oh, excuse me. Um, our second candidate is from Old Greenwich Elementary School, and I'd ask Principal Jen Bensavango to please come up and introduce Ms. Ryan Mayo. No relation. <laughs> I brought my sidekick, Rafi Lindia, with me. She's really the uh, person to give the award today. Ryan Mayo begins each day checking in with her special education teachers for her students and determines individual needs for the day. She quickly anticipates areas of focus, engages next steps within seconds of arrival, sometimes needing to adjust her plans to address unexpected behavioral blips or extend an academic lesson when her students are ready for a challenge. Her day is so diverse, it often includes facilitated communication between peers, supporting play-based interactions in kindergarten, data literacy in fifth grade, and everything in between. Her work with our students is vital as she is their most constant learning support in any given day. And when students are adjusting for personalities and expectations of each teacher, Ryan quickly becomes their voice, their constant, and the greatest support to facilitating what can be very challenging for students with language processing and social language challenges, often in play with students with more comprehensive learning needs. But above all, Ms. Mayo is a beloved member of our school community and student support team. Her students continue to grow and flourish as a direct result of her dedication and genuine love for the children each and every day. She is most deserving of this recognition and we couldn't be more proud to honor her today. As Rafi put it, I just love her. <laughs> Ryan, come on. As I said earlier, both Ms. Mayo and Ms. Pisani are examples of all of the best qualities of Anne Marie Murphy and the rest of Connecticut's paraeducators. However, we can only send one nominee forward. It is therefore my pleasure to introduce you to the 2020 Greenwich nominee for the Anne Marie Murphy Paraeducator of the Year Award, Ms. Julie Pisani. You may now applaud. Is the uh, senior class president and uh, actually well, our student government president who can't be with us because of a uh, minor injury? Miss Raven? Hi, I'm Lauren Raven and I am the liaison to student government from the Board of Ed, and it's my pleasure as the liaison. Uh, to Student Government Executive Committee to recognize and thank our outgoing Senior Class President James Heavey and Student Body President Alex Kostikov, who couldn't be here, he's having surgery on his wrist right now. And on behalf of the entire board and administration, we thank you for using your student voice, often with humor, and to inform us on the issues of importance such as student spirit, decreasing student stress, and what to do with opportunity block. Having participated in your monthly executive committee meetings, it was an honor to hear your ideas, offer you feedback, and see you all grow and expand in your leadership roles and your dedication to the students you represent. Can I get point out here? Yes. You know, I, I, we attended a uh, meeting monthly with the student government leadership, and uh, I just have to say that Jamie and Alex were such a force uh, and, and we're such a leaders on that uh, committee. 
SRO had 35 students signed up. Jamie went out and Alice went out and they made it 100 and, how many was it? 125. 125 at the end. So they're the embodiment of school spirit. Go Cardinals. <laughs> Also, by the way, address the board at every meeting. So uh, if you stick around a little while, you'll get to hear the humorous side and also meet the incoming folks who are here tonight. All right, so next up is the Euro Challenge, Federal Reserve Challenge, uh, Mr. Keating. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I want to begin by discussing what the Econ Club actually is. Um, about four years ago, this group was founded by a group of sophomores who, are, who just graduated last year. They wanted to have their own club that took part in economics competitions. I at first said, no thank you. I had a lot of things going on, a uh, child on the way, taking over the Model UN group, which is a lot of work. And they persisted and persisted until I said, OK, let's see how this goes. You guys are sophomores. None of you have taken econ and you want to do these econ competitions. How are we going to make this work? So we made it work. Every Thursday, they came after school, they learned at econ, and they took part in their first competition. And they came in first in Connecticut, which was an amazing, amazing thing. Um, in the time since then, we've now expanded that group to include students from ninth all the way through 12th grade. And we have unwittingly made a full program that has ninth and 10th graders do the Euro Challenge and 11th and 12th graders do the Federal Reserve Challenge. At the heart of both of those competitions is monetary and fiscal policies and the challenge of implementing them, whether in a Euro area of 19 different countries that use the same currency or in the United States, 12 Federal Reserve regions with very different backgrounds, regions, and needs. And they also require teamwork. Students take roles. They have to cooperate. They have to suggest policies. Sometimes they have to debate. And they all have to do it within a certain uh, time frame that makes it really challenging. That said, I've probably spent 100 hours with this group of, of students over the, over the last year. I went into the city with them five times to see them compete. Stayed after school until 5 o'clock some days with them to, to, to to give them pointers and to make them redo everything that they did the day before. Um, and ultimately, I really got to see them grow. They would deserve recognition whether or not they did really well. And by the way, they did really well. I'm going to go back a few years and say that both groups started with, um, I wouldn't call them, they just they came up short in their first efforts at both competitions. In their first one, three years ago, the Euro Challenge was not invited back for the second round. The Federal Reserve Challenge two years ago, their first run, were not invited back to the second round. Um, last year, the Euro Challenge made the semifinals and then finished fourth in the whole competition. This year, they again made the semifinals. Uh, this year, the Federal Reserve Challenge made the finals, made third in the whole competition. So I can honestly recognize that the students I'm going to call up here tonight are the, now, they went from being also RANS with no knowledge of economics, some of them, to being the elite in the competitions, every bit as worthy of winning as any of the other teams there. So that said, I'm going to call them up. We have um, uh, certificates for you, and Melissa has the trophy for the Federal Reserve Team. So when we take the picture, we'll make sure to have that trophy out. So first we'll have Melissa come up. Melissa Wu. <laughs> Catherine Yang. <laughs> Jovita Lee. Kent Schneider, Monique Nikolov. This is your Federal Reserve team. And then for our Euro Challenge team, Sophia Pronina, Wyatt Radson, Uma Pinkar, David Katz, Adam Kaufman, Luke Myers, and Autumn Kim. Thank you, everybody.
So next up we have the Odyssey of the Mind World Finals Qualifiers. Uh, I believe we have Ms. Fincher and Ms. Byrne. Good evening. I'm Lisa Fancher and I am the coach of the Greenwich High School Odyssey of the Mind team. For the past three years, Hamilton Avenue, Eastern Middle School, and Greenwich High School have participated in Odyssey of the Mind, an international educational problem-solving activity that takes has one competition, the state tournament, every year, and if you place first or second at the states, you go on to world finals. Um, students learn to work as a team, cooperate, work in a budget, and problem-solve and be creative while doing it. And really, the process is more important than the results. So they work from September until March for the state tournament. And these three teams went on to the world finals at Michigan State University. And they participated in the competition with 44 states and 18 international teams over Memorial Day weekend. This was an amazing once-in-a-lifetime experience for these students. They got to be surrounded by kids from all over the world. Excuse me. <laughs> um, and they got to, to really experience being part of a team. They got to learn from other kids. They got to show their creativity, their resilience. And we're very, very proud of all of the students. I'd like to invite the Hamilton Avenue team to stand up and join me. Destiny Alexander, Rio Lowell, Michael Fratero Sanchez, Leah Herrera, and Giorgio Michelides. Davis, and I was the coach for the Eastern Middle School team. So can I have my team come up and join me, please? We just have a few of our team here tonight because uh, several of them had other engagement this evening. But let's have a big thank you and congratulations for our team members here tonight. We've got Cindy Lee, Uma Graz, and Grace Darno. With us tonight were Kira Dibas, my daughter, Naomi Park, Amrutha Nandakumar, and Hannon Stern. So we did a great job, and thanks a lot. Thank you. 
Congratulations. The team from Greenwich High School included Shira Mann, Alexandra Rafanos, Ashwin Savamoan, and Marcus Mann. Please come up. mention is the most impressive thing about Odyssey of the Mind is the adults don't help. The kids have to do everything on their own. And to just stand against the wall and watch them do it is pretty amazing. So, uh, next up is the National History Day National Competition. These folks have traveled a uh, great distance, I think, today. So, Mr. Hall. And I think Miss Paul is too. Just you? So my name is Aaron Hall. And I'm Courtney Hawes. And we both uh, coach uh, National History Day at Greenwich High School in the We the People program and in InLab. Um, National History Day attracts more than 700,000 students each year um, from all 50 states, DC, Samoa, Guam, Puerto Rico, China, Korea, and South Asia. And our students prepare uh, their projects in either individual or group exhibits, performances, documentaries, websites, and individual papers. Uh, 3,000 students from around the world make nationals, and we are literally coming right off the highway. In fact, um, two of the students that, or three of the students I'm going to mention, um, are actually somewhere in New Jersey as we speak, so they're probably at a dead stop. So um, if I could have the following students come up, um, Cynthia Chen, Lucas Gazianis, Alex Hanna, Toby Hirsch, and Emil Perdue. And while they're coming up, they created a senior group website on uh, ranked choice voting um, that is already garnering quite a bit of attention. We were sharing articles uh, about uh, several of our presidential candidates are interested in seeing this work. It had a significant um, role to play in the main elections. Um, we also have a uh, Callie Headbabney and Sadie Kriegler are two of our students that are en route. They created a senior group exhibit on plastics in our oceans to great claim. And uh, Gracie McCooey uh, did an individual senior performance on the amazing Hedy Lamar. If you haven't looked up information about her, uh, please do so. But phenomenal amount of work put in by these students and uh, quite an incredible accomplishment to send eight of our students among uh, the few number that get to go to the University of Maryland and scramble back as quickly as they can uh, to Greenwich during finals by the way so round of applause for our National History Day <laughs> recognition is the boys golf state champion team. Mr. Santilli, come on down. Good evening. Um, it clearly takes a, a huge commitment to achieve what these young men have achieved basically the past four years, but in the past few seasons, you know, three FCAC championships and back-to-back uh, -back state championships. Um, I think the biggest achievement or the biggest commitment they've made is probably this evening, knowing that the U.S. Open is on right now and Tiger, <laughs> Tiger Woods is playing. And Jackson's streaming it in his pocket 
Billy's DVR in it. Ben's dying to tell him what's going on. But uh, these young men are probably some of the most amazing men that I've coached in my 20 years. Um, accomplishments obviously speak for their talent, but um, on and off the golf course, I can't say enough about all of them. Um, I could go down the line and give you, you know, a big history of all of them that I'm sure would get kicked out of here. But, you know, all FCAC, uh, Jackson, Freddie, and Tyler Denowen, who is not here this evening, all FCAC West was Billy Nail and Ben Ropiak, who is uh, standing right behind me. You know, we started uh, the season off solidly, but we had a little bit of a beat down by Brunswick twice, and the season could have went either way. But by the time we got to uh, mid mid May or so, we kind of started to you know show what this team is all about. And uh, the Holland Championship out of 30 All Stars, Greenwich and these men behind me uh, finished one, two, three, four, and five out of 30 players, which mathematically I don't even think is possible. I've never seen that in my 20 years. Uh, Not only did they finish one through five, they had a 73 by a freshman who won it, a 74, a 74, a 75, and 75. So um, as a Darian coach said to us, and he didn't say it happily, he felt like the second, event, the second to last Avengers movie when the Hulk got beat down so much that he just couldn't come out of himself. Uh, it was out of Darian's golf course. But um, then they went into that week, and after I saw that, I said, all right, we have some hope. There was articles in the paper saying that if Darian doesn't win the state championship, there should be an investigation. So we, we used that for a little uh, little hunger. And uh, after that, they basically just mopped up the rest of the season, and every guy on the team broke 80, which, again, rarely ever happens in a, uh, in a postseason. So, again, I could stand up here all night talking about them, but I just want to say that I'm extremely proud of all these gentlemen behind me, and I, I'm sad to see that my three seniors are leaving. Um, it leaves a big hole in the lineup, but hopefully there's a few 7th through 8th graders out there that are uh, on the way up, and I'm sure that the people that we do have coming back, Tyler Siddell and Tyler Denellen, are going to uh, step up and um, take over for what we're about to lose. So, uh, we'll introduce the players. We have uh, Billy Nail. <laughs> Jackson Freddie. Ben Ropiak and Tyler Siddell. And I'd be lying to you if they're going to stay because they're all going home the last call. As am I. Next up, we have the Air Force Association's Cyber Patriot State Champions. Yeah, I know. Uh, so I guess I'll just have um, John, Michael, John, Roll, and Colin, if you want to come up now while I explain what this is all about. Uh, so I'm Kate Bolger, and I, well, I guess I'm officially the coach, but I'm really just there to unlock the room uh, for these guys. Um, so we participate in a competition called Cyber Patriot, and starting in the fall, two teams from Greenwich High School participated in the Air Force Association's Cyber Patriot competition. The competition this year pitted more than 6,300 teams worldwide, competing over a handful of weekends during the fall and winter. Each competition lasted about six hours, starting Friday afternoons at 3.15, uh, during which Teams just like this were tasked with securing a computer running one of three computer operating systems. Like any competition, there are always ups and downs. This one, with the sweet sound of a Mario tune, playing every time the team would win points. Um, let's see. Uh, the students are uh, tasked with finding viruses, missing software update, up, updates, password policies, corrupt files, open courts, and more to secure points for the team. In Connecticut, there were 42 teams participating this year across three divisions, and after the two initial rounds, our teams found themselves in first and third place in the state, earning spots in the state round. 
After the state round, our teams were placed first and second of the 18 Connecticut teams that advanced, earning two spots in the semifinal round, from which 12 teams in the country are chosen for the finals. Uh, it was during the semifinal round that our team encountered a brick wall, otherwise known as the California teams, during which an all expense, a dreams of an all-expense weekend, weekend competition in Baltimore faded. In the five years that we've participated, this is the first year that we've earned a spot in the semifinals, as well as the first time that we've placed first in the state. So congratulations, gentlemen. So Raul, Colin Marino, John Fernandez, John Trahanis, and Michael Trahanis. Up is one I'm not going to understand at all. It's our science fair winners. So, uh, Mr. Bramante, if you want to come down. Now, this one, we have so many, I'm going to give you the certificates. Hi, Carol. Good evening. Carol. I'm Andy Bermonti, the uh, science research teacher at Greenwich High School. Uh, it was another incredibly successful year for our research program. Uh, for the 10th year running, at least one GHS student was selected as a Regeneron Science Talent Search Scholar at Connecticut STEM, uh, which is held in early February. Uh, four of our students participated amongst 300 from the lower Connecticut area, ultimately competing for, for three top ICEF prizes. And of course, GHS students won two of the three. Um, at the Connecticut Science and Engineering Fair in March, 17 of our students competed, and astounding 16 of these kids were selected amongst the top 15% of projects as fair finalists, and went on to win more than $85,000 in scholarships and cash, and five of the uh, six ICEF spots that are awarded to the best projects in the fair. Uh, at Connecticut Junior Science and Humanities, or JSHS, um, Four of the five top prizes were awarded to GHS researchers, including four trips to compete at the national JSHS in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, there, amongst the winners from all the other states, GHS students received first and second place finishes, totally, totally more than another, another $20,000. On the same day, 11 student researchers participated in NCC's science fair here in Norwalk, taking five of the top 10 prizes. Um, Two of our research students were selected for prestigious 2019 summer research programs, one for RSI at MIT and the other for uh, Simmons, which is held at SUNY Stony Brook. And finally, only weeks ago, five GHS students were competed amongst 1,200 of the brightest kids um, on the planet at Intel ISF in Phoenix. The results were once again outstanding. Uh, in total, GSH, GHS researchers won more than $150,000 this year in scholarships and awards. It was incredible. Um, so will the following students please join me on stage as your name is called? I would suggest you sort of, there's eight, potentially 18. So I'd probably go, you know, stand towards the front. And what I'm gonna do is as I call each name, come on up and then I'm gonna tell you a little bit, a little snippet about what each one of the students did this year. And as I call your name to describe it, could you please step forward? Uh, Cynthia Chen, Paula Clossy, Sam Florin, um, Tyler Fox, uh, Hannah Goldenberg, uh, Bennett Pauley, uh, Hiba Hussein, uh, Raina Jane, 
Uh, Matt Chester. Uh, Autumn Kim. Uh, Alex Kozhikov, I guess I haven't served you. That was news. Um, Nick Liu. Are you here? No. Uh, Colin Marino. Uh, Shun Sakai. Uh, Justin Speaker. Uh, Zach Wang. I, don't, I did not see him. Uh, Melissa Wu. And Kyle Jean. Okay. Just give you a little bit. Okay. Okay. Uh, so as I call your name, step forward. Uh, Cynthia Chen, uh, for Cynthia, energy conservation remains at the fore of our efforts to find alternate energies. Uh, Cynthia developed a smart window uh, at a thin film using tungsten doped vanadium dioxide that would allow infrared sunlight heating it of the home in the winter, but block it in the summer months to keep the home cool. Awesome. Um, Halaclossi developed a rapid portable solar power detection system for breast cancer. In her device, low levels of CA15-3 antigen and a patient's, a patient's saliva can distinguish between normal and stages one through four of breast cancer. Her device holds a lot of promise for as a rapid detection system for both developed and underdeveloped countries. Um, Sam Florin, uh, unlike many of our science fair projects, uh, Sam's was more mathematical in scope and focused on gerrymandering, uh, which is the creation of unfair voting districts for political gain. Um, Sam developed a new metric based on graph theory that can examine and ensure appropriate alignment of districts so that it better represents the population relative to the surrounding region. Um, Tyler, Tyler, uh, many of us depend on plastics, plastic utensils, styrofoam plates for our summer picnics and barbecues. Uh, unfortunately, these materials persist in our landfills for hundreds of years. Uh, well, Tyler developed a new insulative tableware from cornstarch and water repellent thin film that offers the same properties, however it decays in only days. It was awesome. Um, Hannah? Hannah, so far. Uh, Hannah completed a two-year study for which, where she discovered many of the harmful components of e-cigarettes, including significant amounts of diacetyl, which causes irreversible lung damage, known as popcorn lung. Um, she went on to discover that the more than 50 harmful components of e-cigarette papers include induced chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Uh, much like their tobacco counterparts. So that's certainly food for thought of many, as many people uh, look to these devices as a cessation tool for um, tobacco cigarettes. They're just as bad. Um, Hiba. Um, Hiba developed a new treatment for heart disease often caused by accumulation of plaque within the patient's arteries. She engineered a nanotherapy that can magnetically deliver lipase, a fat dissolving enzyme often found in the pancreas, to the arterial blockage where her newly designed smartphone app would sense the actual dissolution of the plaque in only minutes. It's really cool. Uh, Raina? Uh, recent research findings by Dr. Sam Ramsey, who visited GHS this spring, which is really cool, has provided compelling evidence that the disappearance of our honeybees can be attributed to the infestation of beehives by the Varroa destructure which is a mite, a parasitic mite that draws fat bodies or liver from the honeybees. This fat body is really responsible for many of the functions of the honeybee and is now is very clear as to why they're starting to disappear um, in colony collapse disorder. Well, in Raina's research, she developed a dual function thymol emitting beehive entranceway that will remove and kill the remote mite that are attached to the passing bees simply by their rubbing action as they go into the hive. This thing is incredible. Um, Autumn Kim. Uh, Autumn developed a new honeybee venom peptide PLGA nanotherapy that can successfully cross the blood-brain barrier, which is really cool, to selectively target cancer cells based on their cell wall lipid content. Uh, to date, effective anti-cancer agents have been unab unable to do that. So that's really exciting. Um, okay, almost, oh, last page, sorry. Um, Colin. Colin, I'm going to try and get this right. Uh, universal methods to treat cancer remain difficult due to the specificity of the many forms of the disease and desire to eradicate cancer cells while leaving the neighboring healthy cells unharmed. Uh, Colin tells me he dreamt of this, uh, this treatment, later engineered it, 
in a unique, precise, personalized treatment screen, scheme using deoxyribozymes as nucleic acid probes and molecular logic gates. In his genetic-based cancer treatment, mutations that lead to the formation of cancer cells are detected, triggering a cytotoxic protein uh, during nucleic acid translation, which will kill only the cancer cells, leaving the, the healthy cells unharmed. Um, Justin Speaker, with over 40, 40 million cancer uh, contact lens wearers in the U.S. alone, many are susceptible to sight-threatening infection due to poor lens hygiene. Justin developed an inexpensive and effective lens cleaning system based on the use of riboflavin and UV light that prevents growth of even the most progressive infectious organisms. Awesome. Um, let's see, Melissa. Although skin melanoma is treatable, it still accounts for nearly 80% of skin cancer-related deaths due to poor detection and diagnosis, often by time-consuming and expensive biopsies. Well, Melissa tackled this problem and developed a portable smartphone-based system where thermal and color images of the suspected lesion are taken and analyzed by the phone in only seconds to produce a diagnosis with better than 99% accuracy. That's cool. And finally, Kyle Zhang. Last but not least, Kyle. Um, did I miss anybody? I, Sean, oh, oh my God, I do this every time. I'll get back to you. Um, early diagnosis of Parkinson's. This is Kyle. Uh, disease can lead to a better quality of life through management of the symptoms as well as cure the research of, with those afflicted by the early stages of the disease. For these to occur, early diagnosis is sim must be simple and sure. Kyle developed a computer algorithm that can provide a certain diagnosis of the disease based on patient data and test results that are currently only marginally successful. And let's get back to Shun. Where are you? Ah, oh, there you go. Uh, water pollution is the focus of Shun's project. As mentioned uh, many times, bacterial water contamination, particularly by cholera, can cause serious intestinal illness. Shun developed a rapid, simple, and effective water filtration device based on silver nanoparticles embedded in a sari cloth that, when electrified, removes nearly all of the bacteria, making the water safe to drink. Wow, I'm losing my voice. How about a big hand for these guys? <laughs> Nobel Prize winners right here. Association of School Administrators, Administrator of the Year, uh, Administrator of the Year, Dr. Carabello. I almost flew. Good evening, any, everyone. I'd like to recognize Mrs. Barbara Riccio, who was honored on May 30th at the Connecticut Association of School Administrators as an Educator of the Year. This award goes to those administrators who go above and beyond the call of duty to support students in education. Barbara is retiring this year after 50, 35 years in education. She has developed strong relationships with colleagues, families, and students alike. She is revered, revered as someone who has created a warm, collaborative culture within the New Lebanon school community. For six years, she has attended numerous board meetings, collaborated with architects, supported the feasibility studies, and ultimately helped to influence the building of the new, beautiful New Lebanon school. Barbara leaves behind an outstanding state-of-the-art building that will serve our leaders and community for generations to come. Clearly, her legacy will be long-lasting. Please join me in thanking Barbara for her many years of dedication and service to our Greenwich community. She is very deserving of this award.
there's going to be swirling mist over at Newland for sure. Uh, next up is the Greenwich Public Schools Teacher of the Year. It's my great pleasure to introduce the Greenwich Teacher of the Year, uh, who will go on into the uh, competition for the Connecticut State Teacher of the Year competition. Um, Crystal Kissaman. Crystal, come on up here. Crystal is the embodiment of personalized learning. She has taken this strategy and has made it her own. When you enter the, her classroom, you can see her students hard at work. They are self-directed rather than teacher-directed. They work at their own pace, choosing projects that meet the learning goals that they have established for themselves. We would all have benefited from being a student in Crystal's uh, classroom. Crystal has transformed how teaching and learning looks in the classroom. I am proud to present Crystal Kitzman as the Greenwich Public Schools Teacher of the Year. Um, I'd like to Blakely Steinbaugh, who is the co-chair of the uh, Distinguished Teachers Committee, come up. Blakely? No, Blakely. There you are. Chair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought we were going to practice our comedy routine this time. <laughs> Hello, good evening. The Distinguished Teachers Awards Committee has been recognizing excellence in teaching in the Greenwich Public Schools for 35 years now. As a distinguished teacher selected by the committee this year, Ms. Kitzman uh, personifies the criteria of a truly distinguished teacher, and she has her own fan club. Um, on behalf of our committee, I congratulate you and wish you luck in the state program. Congratulations. You know, I'd also like to invite Christine Edwards to come up. Uh, she's representing the Kiwanis Club, but she's also on the Distinguished Teachers Committee. Thank you. We're pleased as the Kiwanis Club in Greenwich to provide her with an award um, on behalf of Joseph Mitchell Kay, who was a member of the Board of Education, an extremely active Kiwanian, president of the Kiwanis, and what we call the Lieutenant Governor for a district for New England. And on behalf of the Kiwanis, we present her with the Joseph Mitchell Kay Award, and thank you. students, teachers, parents, obviously, thank you all for coming. Uh, and next we have two special recognitions. So Mr. Mayo, please come back over here. So uh, first, uh, Peter Tessie was unable to be here tonight, but the town has issued a certificate of special recognition uh, in honor of Mr. Mayo's continued dedication to the Greenwich Public Schools, especially for his service as the interim superintendent on the town. Next up will be uh, Angela Schmidt and Jen Benzevengo for the uh, Greenwich School Administrators. Okay. 
I distinctly remember calling Ralph last May after an end of year meeting with Ann Carabello, and he answered the phone with his go-to greeting of, what's up girl? I told him, Ralph, I just met with Ann, and I told her you were the man for the job of superintendent, and if they'd ask, you'd say yes. And he laughed and said, well, Jennifer, no one called yet, but I'm glad I have at least one person's vote of confidence. We had a good laugh, and about a week later, I sat in the boardroom and applauded proudly as he was named interim superintendent of schools. What few know about Ralph is what a silent but strong support system he is. Last year, when one of my teachers passed away suddenly, he was my first call because he is and always will be a mentor and frankly a second father to me in many ways. He pushed me when I needed to be pushed, holds me back when I'm in the clouds. And not only did he check on my staff daily that week, but came by school to make sure we were doing all, all doing okay and to see if we needed any help. And this as the Eastern Middle School principal, not in any other leadership role, but colleague. And that is the mark of a true leader. His leadership came at a time when we truly needed it and he has led this district with pride and unwavering dedication as its superintendent. Thank you for your leadership, your mentorship, your friendship, now and always. So, I'm losing my voice, so if it goes, I'll turn it back to Jack. I first met Ralph as an assistant principal and a new member of GOSA. Ralph was the co-president, and I remember thinking there was no one he didn't know. Over the years, I got to know Ralph as his co-president, and often sat across negotiation tables with him to the wee small hours. We worked together with many superintendents, and each one presented a new and unique opportunity for Ralph as he shared knowledge of his town to pave the way to mutual understanding and respect. Ralph was that co-president who always defended our membership and fought for fair and equitable solutions. As principal at Eastern, Ralph reached out to his feeder schools to try to ease transitions from elementary to middle and to build greater collaboration between our staff and his. That collaboration is his legacy and continues today as we still visit each other's rooms and plan for student success. One of my favorite memories of Brown has always been being able to check in on my old students and know he would have a story to share. This year, I was reminded that as GOSA co-presidents, Ralph and I always hoped to work with a superintendent who would make a difference and with whom we could find common ground. Well, guess what, Ralph? We found one. It was you. During our monthly meetings and phone calls, you always listened and heard the issues we brought forward with carry and mutual respect. Ralph's mantra is, and always has been, kids first. And this shared, and this shared concern allowed us to resolve more issues than I have seen in all my years as co-president. We thank you, Ralph, for your guidance, support, and most of all, for taking the time to listen. We will miss your leadership, and don't be surprised if we still have you on speed dial. Thank you. All right, so next up is Carol Sutton from the GEA. Yeah. 
All right, don't worry, Ralph. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything embarrassing. Well, I'll tell one story. So, um, so I, I met Ralph um, many decades ago, over three decades ago, and even when I met him for the first time back in the '80s, um, when I first met him, I knew he was extremely special to the school and to the school community and to ev to everyone he touched. Ralph has seriously done everything in the district. He's done everything. Um, he was a teacher, he was an athletic coach, he was a class advisor, he was up there with SRO, doing that with a good friend of mine. Um, he was the head of student activities, uh, he was a housemaster, he was a principal, and finally he's the superintendent of schools. And it has been just tremendous um, to work with him for the past um, 30 plus years. And as I said at convocation, when it comes to GEA, Ralph is truly one of us. He is one of the teachers, that's where he began. So since Angela you know, shared a favorite story, I think uh, Ralph won't, may not even remember this, but I do remember years and years ago, uh, we, took the, we took the ninth graders for a few years to um, Camp Sloan up in, uh, I guess up in Lakeville, Connecticut, and we did an overnight. And I do remember that the first time we took them, Ralph was the housemaster, and, and I, I would do anything, so I went. And um, we were, the students didn't really understand what a sleeping bag was, what it really meant for late October. So, you know, people were a little, little bit cold, but we, we were fine. And I just remember standing by the lake at one point with ninth graders, we had a bonfire, and, and Ralph truly watching a lunar eclipse. And we were out in, the, out in the woods, and we're watching this lunar eclipse, just amazed. And I remember Ralph standing there and saying, the trip's going to be fine, everything's going to be fine. And in a way, I see that as metaphorical for this year. Um, we, we went into a little bit of darkness when we lost yet another superintendent. And out of that darkness, be, because of Ralph, um, we slowly came back into the light. And that's what happened, and for some people, that is, a, that is a, going to be a fond memory. The other thing I would say about Ralph is that many administrators say, I'm a collaborative administrator, my door is always open. And sometimes it's true. But with Ralph, it is always true. And when it came to the GEA leadership, he listened to us. He took notes. He brought the notes out and said, the last time we were together, we talked about this. When I asked him to speak with teachers, he did. He always listened to our concerns. And even better, he always asked me how I was doing. And that's going to make me choke up because that doesn't happen often either from the superintendent. So Ralph, uh, we're going to miss you. GEA is going to miss you. We're so glad you're not going very far. And uh, since this is the week of, of swag, um, so Ralph gets a bag, you know. <laughs> Ralph gets a shirt. Uh, Ralph get, oh, I'm gonna give Mr. Bernstein his after negotiations. We'll see what that looks like. And Ralph gets a sticker, and Ralph gets a donation to the GEA Scholarship Fund to honor him and his service. So thank you, Ralph, and thank you, everyone. It is truly an honor to thank Ralph Mayo on behalf of Greenwich PTA Council. Ralph, you stepped in at a crucial time for the district and worked incredibly hard this year to not only learn the role of a superintendent, but to lead. We simply can't thank you enough for your adaptability and willingness to serve where needed. You were the right person at the right time to step in and help bridge a lot of gaps for us and to work with all parties. Parents were thrilled to see you, staff were thrilled to see you in the buildings throughout the district, and the kids were excited to know who you were. From a council perspective, Karen and I had the pleasure of meeting with you for all those Monday meetings 
and council members were grateful that you came to our monthly council meetings to listen to our concerns and to share district updates. When you took over this position, we are sure you never imagined some of the crazy things you would have to handle. The budget was definitely a huge challenge, but you took on the task with zeal. Thankfully, the snow days were a few and the weather wasn't too bad, but the one thing we did have an abundance of was water. <laughs> yes, this was the year of the flood, and your calm demeanor certainly led us through the challenges here at Coscob, Grinch High School, and even the flooded Ham Ave. As a district, we certainly learned from the challenges, and we were proud of the cooperation that we witnessed as schools reached out and welcomed children, and even the Boys and Girls Club and the YWCA helped us out. Another highlight of your year as superintendent was the opening of the new New Lebanon School, and what a joy to see that new building become a reality after so many years of planning. In closing, we are just thrilled that you took on the job and hope your transition to interim headmaster at GHS is an easy switch. And while we have no idea of the challenges you will face as headmaster of GHS, we certainly hope the next year will be much drier. <laughs> the next thing is, the nice thing is that this is not a goodbye, but a heartfelt thank you. On behalf of council, we have a gift for you. It is not a book or a tie. It, it may be a writing implement, which you can use when you sign all those diplomas next year. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm going to wrap up the celebrity roast of Mr. Mayo in a moment. No, 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 stay right there. Stop wandering off. So I actually, uh, I had been to Eastern to visit the school, I don't know, probably about a month before we had a, a need, an opening, perhaps, and uh, walked the building with Ralph. And you can walk any school with Ralph, or you can walk anywhere in town with Ralph, and everybody knows Ralph. He's truly the man about town and the man about the schools. Uh, and he took that to heart this year. He spent a lot of time in the buildings. But I, I spent that time with him, and I was just uh, amazed by the energy in the building and everything that goes on with the with the teachers, with the students. It, it really was a, uh, an amazing thing to see firsthand. Um, so not very long thereafter, we had a need. Turns out Mr. Mayor held a certificate for the superintendency. Who knew, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who was from your prior? Uh, so when I called him and asked if he'd like to be considered for the uh, position of interim superintendent, his response was just what you would expect. Whatever the district needs for however long the district needs, I'm just here to help. And he really meant that, and he means it now. Um, you know, from the roof at JC to the budget to the water uh, to every little thing, you've risen to the challenge. Uh, I, I remember a previous interim <laughs> superintendent said, Well, interim superintendents come in a couple of flavors. There's the ones that come in and they keep the seat warm, there's the ones that come in and they burn the place down, and then there's the ones that come in and kind of keep things moving. Um, you don't really fit into any of those categories because you, you definitely didn't sit still. You didn't burn anything down. We had a lot of water, no fire. Um, and you just, you didn't just keep things moving. I mean, the progress in the district this year is palpable. It's utterly amazing. And, and I think some of that is really a testament to you, uh, the calmness that you've brought to this position. Um, really, it speaks so much. I, I know Lauren thinks we have a secret friendship. Um, you're a friend, you're a, you're a neighbor, but, but I've learned a lot from working with you, and, uh, and if there's anything I learned, it's whatever the next challenge is, that's the next challenge we're going to tackle. So I, uh, as a parent, and not a board member, but a parent of an incoming ninth grader, I am so thrilled you're going to be at Greenwich High School next year. Absolutely thrilled. Um, for those of you who don't know, this was Ralph's dream job. And so this is sort of the opportunity of, I think, you know, for you to fulfill that dream. And, and I'm so happy that, that you're going there and that's something that you've always wanted. And, and if you see the energy when he's in the school and he's interacting with the students, it's a little different than when he's interacting with us at meetings or with staff. That's where you want to be. I know you miss being with the students, but we appreciate everything you've done this year. So uh, first, um, Kenna, I know you're here somewhere. Uh, when this is all over, uh, the board would like you and Ralph to have a, uh, a nice evening at a restaurant I know you both enjoy. 
Uh, but we also have something else for you, and typically this is a gift that's given to uh, departing board members and people that have been around a long time. And it's something, you know, you should probably wait to have, so I, I, might, I might keep it, and I know 42 is not enough. I might keep this in the box, but oh, it's a school bell. All right, and it's engraved on it, and we really, uh, we really do appreciate everything that you've done for us, everything you're going to do for us, and, you know, I value every moment of our friendship, so please don't go far away. All right, this one pains me. I mean, really pains me. Like, he's going down the street, okay? This one pains me. It pains most parents. Um, Kim Eves, you're going to have to come stand here. I'm sorry. Yeah, you do. I know you like to sit in the back. No, it's not going to happen. Um, Kim has been a part of the Greenwich Public Schools for 19 years. Uh, she's part of the institution, um, part of something every parent has, and I'm going to talk more about you later. Uh, but right now, I'm going to actually call <coughs> Chief Eves, are you still here? Right here. Oh, gee, hey, uh, Peter Tessie wasn't here. Would you mind reading this for me? Thanks. Hope the font's bigger. <laughs> Certificate of Special Recognition presented to Kimberly Eves in honor of her 19 years of dedicated service to Greenwich Public Schools, especially for her service as Director of Communications, celebrated on this 13th day of June 2019. Peter J. Tessie, first selected. There's more. So, of course, I'm not as funny or as entertaining as the other James Heavey. Where do you go? Oh, he's still here. Good. Um, real, real quick, I just want to say uh, I want to thank you. I've been the police chief for seven and a half years, but I've been a Greenwich Public Schools parent for 15, and that ends in, on Monday. Uh, so hopefully you can still keep me on the email uh, so I know what's going on at Ten Hillside Road. The neighbors usually tell me, but I'd like to still stay on the loop. So uh, a certificate of appreciation. Kimberly Eves has faithfully discharged the duties of Director of Communications for the Greenwich Public Schools. Furthermore, in innumerable situations and in partnership with the Greenwich Police Department, she has performed tasks with outstanding professionalism and ensuring the safety of children of the Greenwich Public Schools with, through effective communication. I, therefore, James J. Hebe, Chief of Police for the Town of Greenwich, hereby commend Kimberly Eves for her dedicated service to the citizens of Greenwich, Connecticut, and with this, place her name on the historical files uh, as an honorary member of the Greenwich Police Department Command Staff. Oh. Effective 13 June 2019. <laughs> and the, uh, the police officers know I'm pretty chintzy with awards, but uh, there's a Chief's Award of Excellence that I can award immediately for somebody for doing an outstanding job, and uh, she also receives one of those. So again, we wish her well, and uh, their gain is our loss. So again, uh, congratulations and thank you. superintendents ago, during the reign of what I like to call Roger the First, Jim, <laughs> Jim Bulger asked me to sit on a committee to investigate bringing the IB middle years and high school program to Greenwich. It was my first opportunity to work alongside Kim Eves, and I quickly realized I was in the company of greatness. Countless committees later, from mission and vision development to distinguished teacher, I continue to watch in awe of her professionalism, effortless command of a crowd, and efficient yet tireless work ethic. We shared many a laugh and quiet moments, and more than, one, more than once we both said, you can't make this up. But she always picks up the phone, always has a solution for every problem, and never turns you away. Even when the request is so small or not in her purview, she persists and supports. 
The loss of Kim Eves will be felt for years to come because not only is she the voice of Greenwich Public Schools, she's our historian, greatest advocate, and dearest friend. Thank you for your dedication to the district, the community, and all of us. We'll miss you terribly. So, when I came to Greenwich 19 years ago, my very first assignment was a teacher at ISD. And although I had taught many schools, coming to Greenwich was a whole different experience. And it could have been very overwhelming. That is, if Kim had not come into my life. I had the pleasure of teaching Cameron, her son, and together we formed a partnership that made my first year very memorable. Whether it was parties or field trips, Kim could always be counted on to be there. Not only was she a wonderful parent, but she was an integral part of the school's launch. She worked closely with the principal to make ISD a reality representing the parents and being a member and a voice for the community. Fast forward a few years, and as a new principal, Kim helped me roll out my communication plan and set me up for success. Over the years, Kim has been my guiding light as I battled power failures, and of course, the attack of the chimney swift boats. Somehow, when you reached out to Kim at 7 a.m., she was always there, and she could always calm a raging storm. Through the hiring of assistant principals, interviews with reporters, or dealing with those difficult annoyances principals typically face, Kim always had the right words to get you through anything. As a member of the district data team, dis distinguished teacher, or the face committee, her insight and vision provided perspective and vision. Somehow, knowing Kim was there made things feel just a little bit easier. I can't even imagine next year knowing that familiar calming voice at the other end of the phone won't be there. There are no words to describe the gratitude and appreciation I will always feel when I think of you. You will be missed. calling me it was about a snow day. I don't know, we're resting on the same uh... All right, next up, Carol Sutton. Okay, so Kim, 19 years. Um, I, 19 years ago, when Kim came to the district, I, I, I didn't meet her. In fact, my first contact with Kim was through was also through Cameron, um, except I, he was in ninth grade at the time, and he was in, um, in my class. And then I encountered Taylor in various um, extracurricular activities that we did. And so hearing that they are adults and doing amazing things is really, is really quite, uh, quite, quite fun to do. Uh, when I thought about what I would say, I just, I really, there were just, truly for me, um, there were no words, just, just no words. Uh, when I found out that Kim was leaving, I, um, you know, I, I, I cried. I, I, I said, I think it's time to go home. Um, but some of the words I did write down were these, um, articulate, smart, astute, thoughtful, reflective, honest, calm, 
supportive, hardworking, there's no one else as hardworking as Kim, respectful and professional. And I'm going to say respectful and professional again. I truly believe that we don't even know um, what Kim has her hand in. What we do know is that everything that you can think of that goes right, everything that has gone well, somehow Kim has been involved in it. So Kim, you're a force. We're going to miss you. The teachers are going to miss you. Um, and uh, well, I was—I didn't think of this before, but may, may the force be with you, or are you the force? <laughs> I don't know. But um, we also have for Kim um, a bag, GEA swag. We have a sticker. We have a scholarship given, donated in her name. And there, I am not giving Kim Eves a T-shirt. No way. <laughs> we'll give her something next week, and maybe she'll share. She'll show it to you. Thank you. You'll have to forgive me if I weep through this. <clears throat> the magic of words is that they have the power to do more than convey meaning. Not only do they have the power to make things clear, they, have, they make things happen. Kim, it gives me both great pleasure and deep sadness to be standing here this evening. First and foremost, I'd like to offer you our thanks and congratulations. I'm not one to relish bidding a friend adieu, nor letting a valuable and dedicated administrator go. However, I know that you will only be a stone's throw or a text away. <clears throat> you are and have been the keeper of words and the voice of this district since 2000. I know how hard your role is. You have been the voice of 12 superintendents and numerous super school leaders. Your words have been used to educate parents and town leaders alike. They've been the calm in the storm during moments of crisis. They've soothed our soul in times of sorrow. They've been the harbingers of joy through 19 years of graduations, convocations, administrative appointments, student and staff recognitions, and so much more. In fact, for a time, your voice was... Uh, it was your voice to be the joy of hearing at 6 a.m., telling us about school closures, and to be honest, that may be the only time I didn't hear, enjoy hearing you speak. But you are more than a communication specialist. In many ways, you are the heart and soul of the district. You are our historian and memory keeper. Most people do not truly understand the value of public relations. It entails so much more than writing press releases and providing crisis management. Yours is the practice of building positive two-way communication between our schools and board of education, and the public, the parents, and stakeholders. The success of our schools and the students they serve depends on outstanding communication. Yes, excellent schools need amazing educators and strong curriculum, but they also require the active involvement of parents in the community in order to succeed. Your words are often the catalyst to getting the type of parental and community engagement that students need to succeed. That's why it's called public relations. Information is important, but relationships are essential. Formalized communication is a full-time job, an investment that reaps tangible and intangible benefits, which are often not fully appreciated until they are lost. Jim Rohn once said, if you just communicate, you can get by, but if you communicate skillfully, you can work miracles, and you've done that. On a personal note, I've enjoyed the opportunity to sit with you and discuss all manner of topics, and I will miss you tremendously. I'm sure that there are many things about the Greenwich Public Schools you'll miss. However, I'm guessing that these lengthy meetings will not be one of them, so I'll wrap up. <laughs> there are truly no words for me to share to express our gratitude, nor are there enough languages for me to use to say thank you. The dedication that you've shown to the Greenwich Public School District in your 19 years, during which time I have never once seen you get flustered or lose your cool, like I am at this moment. I know that you will bring the same dedication, spirit, and positive attitude when you relocate to the other side of town. It has been a pleasure. It has been an honor and an incredible education. We wish you all the best to know that our loss is their gain. And as such, Council would like to present you with a small gift. Please think of us fondly when you use it.
All right, hang on, we have a technical issue. I need my glasses. <laughs> that heartfelt um, speech by the PTA Council, we have a contrasting speech, and ours is purely humorous and lighthearted, and we send you off with a smile on your face. To Kim Eves, with love from the Board of Education. All Greenwich students were asleep in their beds. Visions of a snow day danced in their heads. At Mission Control, Miss Eves, sound asleep, was dreaming of... <laughs> was dreaming of surveys and the secrets they keep. <laughs> when all of a sudden there arose such a clatter, she sprang from her bed to see what was the matter. And what to her wondering eyes should appear but two fire trucks and eight firemen in gear. And then at her door, a tall man so fit, she knew in a minute must be Chief Kick. Ice on the roofs has melted, he boomed. Water has entered 15 schools and we're doomed. The fire police were first on the scene. Our response time, fantastic, a sight to be seen. Kim ran to her phone and woke up Mr. Mayo. She suggested a snow day to prepare for the demo. But a day missed from school, Mr. Mayo declared, would be greeted with emails of a kind most unfair. <laughs> he texted Chief Heavey, who without delay, texted, sledding looks fine and less traffic today. At Mission Control, Ms. Eves then recorded a message so fast it beat Captain Cordick. She skillfully crafted eight ways to deliver on voicemail, on email, on text, and on beeper, on website, and pigeon, and Facebook, and Twitter and then opened her window in the last hour of night, shouting, Happy Snow Day to all! It will soon be all right! our recognitions. You're welcome to stay for more of the board meeting because there's going to be plenty more meetings. Uh, or if you'd like, you can exit now and we'll take a Speaker comes, yeah.
Business is the consent agenda. Can we get a motion to the consent agenda? Dr. Francis, second, Ms. Dayton. Any discussion? All those in favor of accepting the consent agenda? Passes 7 0. Thank you. All right, next up is our school welcome. Uh, Mr. Schmidt, thank you for being patient and letting us use the building. We're happy to be here. <laughs> Glad to have you here, really. Uh, good evening, Chairman of the Board, Mr. Bernstein, members of the Board, Superintendent Mayo, members of the Cabinet, and guests. Uh, first of all, I would like to take a moment and just thank our distinguished teacher who was here earlier, Chris Powers, and her advanced band members for performing right before the meeting. Uh, I am Jean Schmidt, the principal of Costco School, and it is a pleasure to welcome you here. This is a rare opportunity for us because usually we have all the budget meetings uh, and don't have a chance to showcase our school. This has been an interesting year for Costco School, and uh, we wouldn't have made it without Kim and Ralph, definitely. In September, we celebrated 25 years since the building had been rebuilt due to a fire. Weeks later, our building flooded, and we had to re relocate many of our students and staff. However, right before this happened, our staff completed our strategic plan goals for the 2018-19 year. On the vision of the graduate capacities, we chose Respond to failures and successes with reflection and resilience. Who could believe it? Part of our belief statement was that by empowering our stakeholders, the students, the staff, the parents, the partners, we could respond to failures and successes with reflection and resilience. Little do we know that we would be living that statement for the months to follow. Mr. Mayo recently asked me, how was my year? And I quickly responded, great. The Koskov community came together as it always does and helped to ensure that no matter what, we were Koskov strong and nothing could keep us down. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our parents, our students, our staff, and our amazing PTA for all of their support throughout this year and for all that they have done and will continue to do to support us. One of the focuses of our SIP plan was that we wanted to empower students with structures and talking points about the reasons for choosing their goals, that they chose this year and why they chose the work that they did to put into their portfolios. The structure allowed the students to choose the work they wanted to present to parents that showcased their successes, their failures, their reflections, their planning, and their resilience during their student-led conferences. They say a picture's worth a thousand words. I hope our very short video does the same, showcasing out the three key levers for change, creating a more personalized learning environment, empowering stakeholders, and reimagining time and space.
Thank you. We're really glad you are here. Thank you very much, Mr. Schmidt. All right. Next up, we have our public hearing. Uh, first up is the GHS student government. Good evening, members of the board and guests. I'm James Heavey, the outgoing senior class president, so I'll keep it short because uh, we have our two new presidents who will be taking over for next year. Uh, but before I do, I just had some quick remarks. I did not prepare them ahead of time, which is something Alex always warned me about. However, he's not here to hear them, so fingers crossed they'll go well. Um, we wanted to convey, both Alex and I, and he's very upset that he couldn't make it here tonight, uh, our utmost gratitude for everything that you guys do on the board, helping our initiatives, helping us uh, to get a better educational experience, and really providing Greenwich with an opportunity for the best education system that we could have. And that's something that we're extremely grateful for, all of the work that you guys put in, and something that we hope will go forward as far as the collaboration between the board and student government going forward. We'd also like to thank the community, because everything we do is because of the stuff you guys do. And you can't phrase it more complicated than that, but it's really here because of you guys. So thank you for everything. And with that, I'd like to introduce our new student body president and senior class president. Our student body president is Zane Cotter. He served as the junior class president for this year and will do a great job next year. And my replacement for senior class president is Lucas Gazianis, um, who's also, we're excited to have both of them take over and do great things. Thank you for your introduction. Uh, first, let me thank James for the wonderful job he did this year organizing a hugely successful SRO and a wonderful senior prom, I heard. Um, uh, I also want to thank Alex and this year's entire executive committee of student government. I've never served on XCOM before, but this year's officers were extremely helpful and welcoming when we had the chance to meet, and I have no doubt that they'll be an incredible resource for me next year. Uh, on that note, let me also thank Ms. Lynch, our XCOM advisor, who I just met, but who has already emerged as a great source of help, as well as Ms. Prelly and Ms. Subak, who have been my class advisors for the past three years while I occupied other officer positions. I've spoken in front of the board once before, last winter, presenting a plan a classmate and I had developed for the Opportunity Block. Uh, but today, I'm speaking to you for the first time in an official capacity, where it's my job to present the sentiments of my classmates and not just my own. So when Zane and I come here to address you all throughout the next year, it's a special opportunity to hear from representatives who care deeply about reporting and promoting their classmates' ideas. Uh, I'm especially excited for this role because I've always taken an interest in the policies that make up our school day. I'm a believer that any practical proposal merits the same consideration regardless of where it originates from, and that means it can come from our superintendent or from a freshman in student government. One thing we've already discussed at great length in our XCOM meetings is student engagement, and we have plans to gear student government towards a more collaborative unit where our reps feel empowered to share and create off of their ideas. Beginning in the fall, if a rep creates a serious idea or a proposal that receives 100 signatures from any students in the school, XCOM will address it during one of our mass meetings. We'll open up the floor for input and debate and even spend time behind closed doors tightening up the proposal before potentially voting on it in a mass meeting. This is to foster an environment where students don't feel like the concerns they report every meeting are becoming lost in a Google form. An environment where they don't have to wait for others to act on an issue that they are the most passionate about. It's in line with our vision uh, of one of the most productive student governments we've seen at this school, and I'm excited to bring forward to the board some of the great ideas that will undoubtedly come out of my senior class and the rest of student government. Next year is going to be one that tests our patience. There are highly important issues that students care about, like Opportunity Block, that have yet to be resolved, but I believe that I'll also find it extremely rewarding. Uh, I'm absolutely looking forward to the challenge of serving as president of the senior class, and I can't wait to come back here in the fall and begin working with you all. Thank you. <laughs> Student body president, Zane Cotter. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before I formally begin, uh, I just want to thank uh, Alex Kosakov, who is uh, not here, um, for his three work through, <laughs> for his three years on the executive committee um, in student government. Uh, and I've worked with Alex since I was the freshman class president, and you know, I've watched him grow both physically and intellectually 
Um, yeah, he was like here, now he's almost my height. Um, into the passionate and, and well-read force of nature that he is today. Um, and so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you could please join me in giving him the biggest round of applause so that he can hear it all the way at the hospital. <laughs> Um, in addition to that, I'd also like to thank Mr. Piotrowski and Mr. Mayo for their unrelenting resolve, despite being thrust into new positions. Uh, as a student, I understand how difficult it is to drop everything you know and to learn something new. We do it every fall. So uh, thank you, gentlemen, and a round of applause for them. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mayo, members of the board, administrators, parents, assistants, and distinguished citizens of Greenwich. My name is Zane Cotter, and I'm the student body president of Greenwich High School. And I realize very few people in the grand scheme of things get to say that they were their school's student body president. And so I am beyond honored and humbled for the opportunity, for the opportunity to not only be the student body president, but to also be able to speak at these meetings and share my thoughts with the greater Greenwich community. And what are these thoughts? I want to talk about where I come from and how that is reflected in the Greenwich I want to create. My father was born in the Gaza Strip and my mother in Damascus, Syria. None of my parents were born into wealth or had even remotely any connections to rely on. Not in the Middle East and certainly not here. And yet, through hard work and nothing but the sheer desire to succeed and to better themselves, they have managed over their lifetimes to fulfill the American dream and to leave their children better off than they were to move to Greenwich, one of the wealthiest, most secure towns in the nation, so that their children could succeed without financial burdens. I imagine that most of you, at least those among you who are parents, do what you do for the same reason, for the children, for the future. I've learned from my parents the importance of hard work. Nothing is free, I would always hear, not even the air we breathe. I've grown up listening to those words, and despite living in this affluent town, for almost half of my life, have tried to work for and appreciate all that I have been given. And so, unsurprisingly, the Greenwich culture I want to create is a hard-working one, one where anyone, be they from Byram or Old Greenwich, can work hard and be judged based on nothing but on their merits and on their passion for success. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask that in your never-ending quest to improve the lives of students across the district, you take care to not contribute to the growing culture of entitlement and the notion that we don't need to work hard for what we have. Because the true development of character is when you have a goal and you fail countless times, but then after hours, days, months, and even years of brutal effort, you succeed and you find happiness in the absence of sadness instead of the other way around. Give students the opportunity to fail before they succeed. It is the only way they will learn. Thank you. for the GEA comments. Good luck, Carol. Thank you so much. That was inspiring. Um, good evening, Principal Schmidt, Chairman Bernstein, and board members, Mr. Mayo, Superintendent, and Cabinet members and community. We'll see how I, I've been talking a lot this year, so um, I'm very proud and honored to represent over 900 members of the Greenwich Education Association. And um, this evening, as Zane said, Zane, I, I didn't have one second to write an amazing speech like you just wrote, so if this is a big fail, it's fine. <laughs> it'll, it'll be completely fine. I'll probably talk to you again next year. But I really wanted to say that um, this evening, for me at least, and for all of us, is really about what it means to be part of this very large Greenwich Public School community. And I represent the teachers. They're in the throes of end of the year. Their heads are spinning around. They're trying to keep the, the, the students calm. I know Koskov has to do that for a little bit longer than anybody else. But I'll be here. I'll, I'll help them out. Um, but I also think it's a wonderful end to the year to recognize um, six paraprofessionals who um, are really some unsung heroes in their schools, and to have one emerge as the paraprofessional of the year 
Um, I wasn't even here when it was announced, but Julie um, Pisani of uh, Western Middle School. Um, our paraprofessionals are the reason why many of our students succeed. Um, in the NEA, they call them ESPs. They're called Educational Support Professionals, and that is truly what they are. They provide the support for the students and therefore for the teachers, and they have professional skills that are essential to our students' success. It was wonderful to hear about the Administrator of the Year, um, Barbara Riccio. I've known her since I became President of GEA. I was there with her for the opening of the new school. I know how hard she worked to make that come to fruition, um, and I know how much she'll miss the school, but she left behind a legacy that will last for generations. Zach and, and James. Um, Zach is in here today. James is. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to also be introduced to Zane and Lucas. Um, I did ask, hey James, wait, before you go. <laughs> I, I was talking to Zach the other night at the P-TECH dinner, and I asked him if you gave him his goodie bag. So I have it. Oh, 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 Alex, I'm sorry. It's, it's actually in his large bag of goodies. We've been missing each other. We've been oh, out yeah. for no. Okay, Alex, don't don't worry. But I did ask. I did ask. No, I asked Alex, and I said, "Did did, did James give you your goodie bag?" He's like, "Huh." So thank you for giving it to him. That's beautiful. GEA appreciates you. And what I wanted to say to you that night is, don't forget to keep in touch with your teachers. They really want to hear from you and hear how you're doing, and buy some nice school supplies. Um, it was also this week where uh, we honored people from PTEC, and it's a wonderful part of the community to be here this evening with the outgoing president, Karen Hirsch, the incoming co-president, um, Cricket Diamond, and the incoming co-president, Brian Paldunas. Are you the co- uh, Vice president, okay. They've got a structure like, like nothing else. I wish GEA had that as well. Um, how amazing to see the Teacher of the Year. I know for you, Mr. Mayo, that was extremely, extremely difficult. When you take 900 plus people, you zero it down to, you know, a few, a pretty large handful of nominees. You put that down to six, and then you have to choose one. I don't envy you that job at all, and we are so proud of Crystal. Um, all year long, we've heard from so many scholars, athletes, activists, students, academics. Um, it's just been amazing to see what the results are of our education. Um, I also want to draw your attention tomorrow morning, um, if you're not doing anything at 1030, uh, 13 seniors will graduate from the Windrose program, which again, if you, don't, if you don't know about it or you don't know somebody, you may have no awareness of what that is. But these 13 students um, possibly would not be graduating if it was not for Windrose and for what the board has put forward to create that program and what their teachers and the administration has put forward. I'm definitely going to be there. They'll also get to walk with their, with their classmates, but um, 10.30 tomorrow, if you haven't heard of Windrose, um, you need to check it out. And then of course, um, again, as part of our community, there's all of you. I'm looking forward to hearing from people tonight to talk about their interests, board members, we always look forward to the work that you do and are thankful and appreciative for that. Cabinet, same thing. You guys are amazing doing the work of this district. And at some point next year, when I see you again, we'll be greeting Dr. Tony Jones, who will come in and take the helm and steer us, hopefully, ever forward. So um, thanks for coming tonight. Thank you for people who come every, every single meeting. Um, this is truly an, a, a wonderful community in which to work, in which to be educated. And uh, GEA thanks you very much and look, have a great summer and uh, we'll see you in August. Thanks. Thank you. All right, next up is PTA Council. Good evening, Superintendent Mayo, Chairman Bernstein, Principal Schmidt, members of the board, cabinet, and community. My name is Karen Hirsch, outgoing president of PTA Council, and with me are Cricket Diamond, incoming council president, and Brian Paul Dunas, our incoming first VP. Council would like to extend congratulations to the eclectic array of overachievers whom the board honored earlier. We're proud of all of tonight's honorees, including our stellar and soon to graduate, and 
missing, uh, GHS student government and senior class presidents who've spoken up and out so passionately to advocate for the needs of the GHS students this year. We also would like to welcome Lucas and Zane, and after tonight's speeches, we truly expect great things from you. Uh, the numerous awards given tonight are further proof that our students and our staff are truly extraordinary. Tonight marks both a beginning and an end. This is my last time standing up and addressing you as president of the PTA Council. It is the last board meeting of the school year. It's also the beginning of a much needed summer break for us and the planning for the 2019-20, at the beginning of the planning of the 2019-2020 school year for you. Uh, tonight's agenda items not only reflect on the past year, but give us opportunity to look forward and discuss what we want to accomplish in the year ahead. So, when discussing the assessment calendar, we remind you to make sure that the proposed schedules are designed so as to guarantee minimal disruption to classroom learning opportunities. National PTA believes and Council concurs that the high quality assessments provided, val uh, provided valuable information to parents, teachers, and school leaders about the growth and achievement of our students. Parents should know not only how educators will be using this data, including which assessments will be used for future placement and what weight each carries, but also how it can be used to support their child's academic growth outside of the classroom. Parents should not only be notified as to when their students' results will be available, but that they be available, which is why the long promise and yet to be launched parent data portal is truly necessary. Turning now from data to instruction. The Innovative Teaching and Learning Report notes the development and publishing of a personalized learning playbook for parents. And while Council had an opportunity to see a draft version of this earlier in the year, we've yet to see the actual playbook for parents. It's both necessary and needed, is it needed as it could be yet another tool for parents to use to support their students' education at home. The report also notes a presentation on screen time, How Much is Too Much, which highlights concerns that we have raised with the administration and at numerous meetings. Council's requested an in-depth look at digital learning, and more specifically screen time, to get an accurate account of how much time is spent daily on devices and how they are being used within each program. Many parents have expressed concerns about the proliferation of devices, especially within the elementary schools. They question how they support academic achievement and whether the benefits of digital classrooms outweigh the risks. And while Council has not made much headway in obtaining data on usage, nor analysis on efficacy, we continue to advocate for the creation of a district policy on screen time and digital wellness. Continuing our focus on wellness, we are glad to see tonight's update on the PE curriculum, as physical education is a key component in serving the whole child. Research shows that where children are fit and receive the proper amount of exercise, along with proper nutrition, they gain valuable life and social skills, perform better in school, and are able to learn at a higher level. Much like PE, career and technical education uses lessons students learn in science and math and shows them that what they learn in core academic classes can be translated into the real world and introduces them to career pathways and opportunities which can have a truly positive effect on their futures. We applaud the district's efforts to provide these future forward programs. Speaking of physical activity, there is a pressing need and desire to get renovations and improvements to Cardinal Stadium underway. The stadium plan was designed and approved by the board last year to take into account the needs of student athletes and those who come to support them. It has been said that there is a difference between getting the job done and getting the job done right. And from past experience, we know that what we create today will be there for students for years to come. And as such, future needs, needs must be taken into account. We hope that tonight's discussion will provide some clarity and allow this project to move forward. Last, but most certainly not least, is PTA Council's annual report. Council not only represents, but works to ad educate, advocate for, and support Greenwich Public School PTAs and the over 9,000 students and families that they serve. We are committed to working to improve the education, health, and welfare of all children. We urge you to take the time to read our report as it details the countless contributions made by Council's Board of Directors, 14 committees, and our 15 PTAs to our schools and the community overall. Reports from each committee and PTA detail contributions in areas of academic and extracurricular programming, social and emotional learning, family and community engagement, and facility improvements, not to mention the thousands of volunteer hours given, and all this can be found in the report. 
Our committees and PTAs have truly moved mountains this year to support the health, well-being, and education of our students, as well as the vision of the graduate and the district's strategic plan. Accordingly, we would like to thank the people responsible for getting so much done. Our PTA leaders and countless volunteers the Council's Board of Directors and Committees for their tireless efforts on behalf of the students and families in the district. At this last business meeting of the school year, we want to thank the Board of Education and the Cabinet. We are fortunate to have such dedicated and caring individuals focused on asking the deeper questions so that each program and, and facility is being used to best benefit our children and their education. We look forward to what can be accomplished by working together, focusing on collaboration and communication to make every child's potential a reality. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I want to thank PTAC for the written report of all the PTA activities. If you, if you read it, it's just a, uh, a really amazing document, how much enrichment goes on thanks to the parents and the community. So thank you for that. All right, next up are our community comments. Uh, per board policy 9325, speakers each get three minutes. Um, you'll get a 30 second warning and then uh, three minutes we'll ask you to please stop. Uh, if you go over and you can't fit all your comments in, you should feel free to email us. The board address is on our website. Uh, we ask that you be uh, appropriate and respectful, uh, that you uh, offer objective criticism of the district operations and programs, but not uh, concerning individual district personnel. If that does happen, we will stop the comments. <coughs> All right, we're going to start, and I'm, I'm going to apologize right now if I mispronounce names. Uh, I need to find my glasses, though. That's the good news. All right, uh, first up is Jennifer Wick and Priya Shanak. Before you start, the next speaker is uh, Karen Kowalski, if you want to get ready. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. I am before you on behalf of an ever-growing group of parents concerned about increased screen time in our schools, some of whom are here tonight. We asked for a review of the current use of technology in our classrooms and defined usage guidelines going forward. There are educational factors to be considered, as well as social, emotional, and privacy considerations surrounding the district's increased use of technology. As our elected representatives, we call on the Board of Education to provide transparency and independent data analysis. Let there be no mistake, personalized learning equals increased screen time for our children and decreased direct instruction for our children. <clears throat> 